In China, the use of technology in surveillance is raising alarm. Imagine a scenario where every move you make is closely monitored and your actions are transformed into real-life data. This isn't a depiction of a prison, but rather a glimpse into a classroom in a Chinese school. This footage has gone viral on Chinese social media platforms. This particular classroom is located in a high school in Shandong Province, China. Cameras are strategically positioned to capture every student's actions during class. These cameras utilize advanced technology to analyze even the slightest movements of students, whether it's a student lowering their head, raising it, or standing up. These actions are swiftly identified and color-coded for tracking. Additionally, real-time numerical scores are displayed alongside the students. China's monitoring of students' classroom behavior takes various forms. This so-called smart classroom behavior management system is not uncommon in Chinese educational institutions. Multiple cameras are installed both inside and outside classrooms, employing facial recognition technology to scrutinize students. Every 30 seconds, students' faces are scanned to detect their emotions such as happiness, sadness, or surprise. At the same time, it records students' actions throughout the entire class. If a student happens to be inattentive or distracted during class, teachers receive immediate notification. The constant feeling of being watched by countless eyes places immense psychological pressure on students. Such technology can also be applied to monitor working adults. Under the watchful eye of cameras, every minute away from one's workstation is logged. Additionally, the ID cards won by employees come equipped with tracking capabilities. In the lens of this camera, the young woman merely stepped away from her desk to buy some milk tea for her colleagues. Within moments, an alarm has already sounded. This unfortunate woman will face salary deductions as a penalty. Even more advanced technologies like iris and voice recognition are employed for high-tech surveillance targeting specific individuals. These technologies are specifically designed for the Chinese Communist Party's CCP's stability maintenance efforts. The CCP can thus intercept any potential incidents before the Chinese population resorts to petitions or a protest. The research in the field of biometric recognition technology at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Automation has reached a level where it can identify not only fingerprints, irises, facial features, palm prints and voices, but also handwriting and even gait. Cell phones monitoring users' personal activities, household TV set-top boxes, and other hardware surveilling family members and apps collecting data on your spending habits and whereabouts are just the tip of the iceberg. In addition to these intrusive measures, local governments across China are now mandating citizens to download official anti-fraud apps on their smartphones in the name of preventing scams. In reality, these apps serve as long-term tracking and monitoring tools for users, essentially functioning as trackers. Due to the cohesive installation efforts involving public security personnel and community workers going door-to-door, -door, this has sparked widespread discontent among the public. China not only has an astonishing number of over 700 million surveillance cameras, which can be found on street corners, public spaces, and residential complexes across the country, but it also has the capability of automatically identify the skin color, distinguishing between Asian, white, or black. This raises concerns about crossing ethical boundaries prevalent in Western societies. The extensive and pervasive surveillance within China has left Westerners who have experienced it deeply unsettled. A technology regulation researcher at the Center of Strategic and International Studies shared their perspective on this matter. So this is something that's both very dehumanizing, but also very concerning from a human rights perspective, um, part, in part because if there are any errors in this technology that could lead to false arrests, it could lead to discrimination, but also um, just because just the ability to sort people by skin color on its own, I, I think will almost inevitably lead to people being discriminated against. Given the information presented above, would you still be willing to travel to or conduct business in China? According to China Immigration Statistic Bureau in first half of 2023, China received only 500,000 foreign arrivals, a 96% decrease compared to the 14 million in the same period in 2019. One significant reason for this decline is the omnipresent surveillance and restricted travel experiences that are alarming to freedom-loving foreigners. 
But the question remains, can you avoid CCP style surveillance simply by not going to China? Not necessarily. Even if you travel in Europe, you may still encounter surveillance equipment from the Chinese company Hick Vision, such as in Brussels Central Station in Belgium. When you board an airplane, you might come across Hick Vision security devices at the airport. Hick Vision is in fact a Chinese company closely associated with CCP's military industrial complex. It is unusual that this company chooses to collaborate with cities such as Toulouse, the location of Airbus, Bordeaux, or a hub of aviation and aerospace technology, and Brest, a major French defense base and center for marine research. This raises concerns that some European countries may have allowed CCP influence in their security infrastructure. Even before July 2022, you couldn't escape the presence of Chinese security equipment in major airports across the United States. Some may say it is an overreaction and does not warrant so much concern. However, due to the reality of the threat, the US government has taken concrete steps to address this concern. In 2022, the Biden administration allocated nearly $1 billion to refurbish and expand 85 airports throughout the US by 2027. This initiative aims to completely replace made in China security equipment such as X-ray scanners with American-made products to ensure national security. Is it really necessary to be so cautious? Industry experts argue that the situation with Hick Vision is not dissimilar to the concerns raised about Huawei. The issue of Huawei smartphones having backdoors for potential monitoring and surveillance has garnered widespread attention in the West. Entrusting a strategically vital sector to a company closely connected to the CCP government and military could have unpredictable consequences for the West. Hick Vision has made significant inroads in Europe in recent years, with products being used in 26 out of the 27 European Union members. Many Western cybersecurity experts and officials are concerned that as Hick Vision continues to expand its global market share, Beijing authorities may use a national intelligence law to compel Hick Vision to hand over sensitive data collected through its devices. This could potentially allow the CCP government to gain insight into cross-border trade activities in European countries and interfere with critical transportation systems when necessary. As highlighted by U.S. Senator Marco Rubio in 2019, there are two significant reasons why Chinese companies must be viewed with caution. They operate with the backing of the CCP, supported by the national system. First, they must respond to the interests of the CCP. Secondly, within these companies, there is internal oversight by CCP members. Furthermore, Chinese law mandates that if required, companies must engage in espionage activities to collect intelligence. These factors underscore the close relationship between Chinese companies and the state's interest, raising concerns about potential security risks. In the midst of brutal oppression by the CCP, re-education camps in Xinjiang, Huawei as a giant in the Chinese telecommunications equipment industry, played a complicit role by using its surveillance technology. This allowed the CCP to gain more support and export the surveillance technology and equipment to other countries. Apart from Huawei, companies like Hikvision, Dahua and Meiya Pico, which have close ties to the CCP, are also being systematically supported by the CCP to promote and market the surveillance model on the international stage. The Belt and Road Initiative has enabled the export of China's security industry information technology, allowing these companies to expand their database through overseas development, thereby enhancing their systems. As U.S. Congressman Mike Waltz put it, Thus, the scale from which uh, the Chinese Communist Party is gathering data uh, is, is incredibly difficult uh, to compete with. Uh, not only does it have a society without privacy standards um, internally to gather that data for its own internal techno surveillance, uh, but the, the way in which it's deploying hardware around the world almost for free, uh, Huawei and ZTE being the most notorious, uh, to then pull that data kind of back to the mothership. In 2021, Lithuania, a member of NATO, cited national security concerns when it declared a ban on the use of surveillance equipment produced by China's Hick Vision at its airports. 
The Estonian government, in its 2021 International Security Report, strongly warned about China's influence operations in the West, aiming to divide and weaken the US and Europe, with the ultimate goal of creating a world under Beijing's control. Another European country, Belgium, also uses similar security screening equipment and closely observed Lithuania's decision. According to Alain de Neve, an analyst at the Royal Military Academy in Belgium, there are security concerns because there may be spyware within these machines that people are not aware of. Human rights and individual freedoms have consistently been disregarded by the CCP. The CCP's mentality has often been that problems may go unsolved, but those who raise the problems must be dealt with. Thus, technology has been harnessed to serve this authoritarian governing ideology. For instance, every detail of individuals' data is meticulously recorded, their movements are easily tracked, and their consumption behavior and financial flows are closely monitored. The CCP's surveillance knows no bounds and employs extreme measures, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. The CCP's surveillance tactics within China are diverse, but does it stop within its borders? Domestically, the CCP has constructed an Orwellian surveillance state, along with a sophisticated internet content censorship system. The goal is to monitor and suppress all public dissenting options, driven by its fear that political freedom could threaten its regime. As criticism and opposition voices grow globally, the CCP's nefarious surveillance and censorship practices inevitably spill over. Furthermore, if the world becomes more sympathetic to CCP ideologies, it could benefit the CCP in maintaining its grip on power. Indeed, many authoritarian countries around the world, such as Zimbabwe, Venezuela and Ecuador, are taking cues from the CCP and adopting similar tactics in digital surveillance and control. They are emulating the CCP's playbook in this regard, making it a mandatory lesson for them. These regimes are rapidly expanding the mass-scale technological surveillance of their citizens, implementing internet censorship and using computers and big data to control individual expressions. Under the influence of the CCP, they are following similar games rules to exert digital social control. The technology for information control has become a powerful tool for authoritarian states, enabling them to strengthen their grip on power. What is even more concerning is that as the CCP's extensive surveillance expands globally, its monitoring systems are gradually entering democratic countries. In recent years, surveillance cameras and videos analysis system produced in China have been exported to numerous countries worldwide. In addition to government procurement projects in other countries, Chinese surveillance equipment has also made its way into the homes of ordinary people through e-commerce platforms like Amazon and eBay at affordable prices. On the Amazon bestseller list of home security and surveillance cameras in the United States, several Chinese companies, including Shenzhen Smart Eye Digital Electronics and Yi Technologies, have ranked prominently. Consumers of these products have raised concerns in product reviews. They have noted that in order to use a product, you need to download an app on your smartphone. This app can access your browsing histories, call records, contacts, the apps you're using, and more. Moreover, the downloaded app can alter your phone's system settings and upload download data without your permission. Even ordinary users in foreign households may unwittingly fall under the surveillance and control of the CCP, posing a significant security threat. Why China's surveillance system is so much more advanced and comprehensive than, than other uh, countries is not only because they have several of these programs, but also because they're increasingly using something called uh, data fusion, so that's taking different data sources and, and merging them together to create these very comprehensive portraits on individuals and track them across all facets of their lives. And so um, that is not a perfect process by any means, but China has had the ambition and is putting in the resources for the last several decades to, to make this a reality, and it is increasingly powered by AI. Dr. Valentin Weber, a senior research fellow at the German Council on Foreign Relations, published a research report titled The World Wide Web of Chinese and Russian Information Controls. He argues that China and Russia are currently selling sophisticated surveillance equipment worldwide without any regulations or oversight mechanism in place. 
Even in democratic countries, there are no comprehensive rules governing surveillance. As the internet becomes increasingly integral to all aspects of life, this kind of surveillance and censorship can lead to instability and harm to populations. Authoritarian regimes led by the likes of the CCP attempt to control what their citizens can access and share on the internet through monitoring. Their goal is to maintain control over the populace, suppress political opposition, and prevent uprising against their authoritarian governments. Understanding the fundamental objectives reveals that surveillance is fundamentally about maintaining stability. In the current economic challenges faced by China, nothing is more critical to the CCP than the security of its regime. No other government invests as extensively and ruthlessly in the development of surveillance technology as the CCP does. I think the Chinese Communist Party is actually trying to pioneer a uh, an entirely new model of governance, one that seeks to marry up the um, the wealth and innovation that comes from a kind of thriving technological um, in, industrial base with the security and stability of totalitarianism. And uh, they understand that technologies like artificial intelligence offer the most likely opportunity to to blend those two aims uh, in one place. Fortunately, there are alert and thoughtful minds in the West faced with the assertive surveillance and influence campaigns of the CCP. How should the civilized world respond? Human rights experts argue that even if the CCP's Orwellian policies within China fail to raise alarms within the international community, its export of surveillance technology should serve as a wake-up call. The threat on freedom extends beyond the Chinese people. It is high time for democratic nations to stay vigilant and not be misled by seemingly affordable and powerful software and hardware products from China. When the CCP goes to great lengths to safeguard its regime, their notion of security can actually bring insecurity to the world. It's time for democratic nations to come together and establish a global set of norms that are more universal and comprehensive to maintain national security and protect people's privacy instead of allowing companies supported by the CCP to easily enter European and American markets while focusing solely on short-term gains, a more strategic and long-term approach is needed to safeguard against the dangers posed by the CCP. Technology that should have been used to protect people's safety has now been weaponized by the CCP to instill fear and suppress freedom of expression. Preventing the CCP from exporting its malevolent surveillance practices and stopping the spread of digital authoritarianism is an inevitable battle between the Democratic Alliance and the authoritarian front. Stein Rehn, a sociologist from Norway, warns the world in his book Perfect Dictatorship that the CCP is developing a form of authoritarianism that achieves the strong control effects while employing softer means of enforcement using information and communication technology to control society. George Orwell's famous novel 1984 depicted a terrifying world where people were constantly watched by Big Brother. In the current era, with the CCP's continuous export of extreme surveillance and attempts to influence the world, fiction could become reality. In the 21st century, the primary competition lies not in the military might, but in information technology and economic rivalry. If the democratic civilization doesn't prevail in this battle, the world could fall into a terrifying, invisible, prison-like darkness. Mm -hmm.